Well, it seems like things just keep rolling back around again to some sort of big report. I'll be able to speak to you the next time just after the report, but this will be the last time we talk before this grain report we've got on Thursday. But let's talk about corn. That's been a big mover as of late, and that's really the one that most folks are afraid about right now. And <clears throat> we've seen some decent action there. Obviously, after that last big number we got as far as acres goes, we sold off very hard. But as we st saw the vacuum of fundamental news dry up, we started to see the market kind of recover and recovered to about 50% back from the lows of that move after the WASDA report that we just had as far as acreage goes. And that's when the technician, technician stepped in and sold that move at about 50% retracement. That's a very common thing to do, selling that move after you've seen it retrace 15%. Now, I've already mentioned we've got <clears throat> another report on Thursday. Uh, that's going to be a biggie again. We're going to have to kind of keep an eye on things as trade gets worse, or at least not worse, but as the volumes dry up and the volatility may kind of get heightened going into it, we still have a, a day and a half of trade before that happens, but that's going to be something we're going to have to watch. And we're going to need to see some sort of new bullish news. We've got to feed that bull every day. That's going to be something that uh, has got to be coming out of that report. I, I would say that um, it's still going to be a long-term play because we're not really going to know until we get these things out of the ground. That's what's going to be a problem all year long now. Your imagination is going to be your own worst enemy. We're going to extrapolate and interpolate probably some of the wrong things here. But at the end of the day, when we finally pull it out of the ground and get it in the bin, that's when we're going to have an idea about what this crop's doing for us. So having said that, we still have the funds that are involved. Uh, they're long 182,000 contracts. That's you know, not that, not, not that much, but not also it's nothing to sneeze at. But that's another big thing to keep an eye on. Uh, because they're still committed, and we'll see if that, that, that pays off. We've had a decent move. Um, it's obviously been a, a busier spring than normal. But these cold and, and, and wet springs are a lot more different to trade than, say, a hot and dry spring, right? Hot and dry, everybody gets out in front of you. You feel it. You're sweating, cutting off the train, walking to the office. Your yard doesn't look good. Your flowers aren't up. <clears throat> Those types of things are in your face every day. But when you have a spring that we had wet and cool weather, Things are enjoyable. You forget about how bad the planting season may have been because your yard looks fantastic. All your flowers are out. The walk to, to and from the train isn't as bad every day. So those types of things are longer and take a, a little bit of time to fester. And that's why we're going to have these issues going into this, uh, this, this last harvest because it's going to be very important to see what we actually pull out of the ground. And that's why I say this is a long-term play. It's something that you kind of have to watch day to day, but really make sure that you st you have good protection and you take a 40,000 uh, foot view at this thing because that's what it's going to take to kind of keep your head about you.